Woo! Hi, welcome to 15 Minute Story. This is the first 15 Minute Story ever. Uh, 15 Minute Story is all about your walk with Jesus, your stories about Jesus, uh, how you came to know Jesus, any of those things. Just any 15 minute story you want to share. It might be 16, it might be 10 minutes. Um, just anything you want to share. So today is the first one, and I'm interviewing Morgan Prophet, a longtime friend, grew up together, youth group together, all those things, and I know her story is awesome, and uh, this will be my first time hearing some of these things, and I'm excited to hear what she has to say about um, just her life and her walk, and I hope you all enjoy it, because I know Morgan, has, again, has so many good things to say. So we're going to start out with a heavy question, a good question, but Morgan, when did you accept Jesus in your heart, and what did it really take to accept Jesus in your heart? So the word accept, I, I love that that's the word that you're using for this, because um, for a really long time in my life, accepting has been the hardest part. Um, growing up in a, a Christian home, you know, the stereotypical church-going kid, um, I never really felt comfortable or, uh, I guess, allowed to express doubts or insecurities or fears. Um, and for a long time, it just seemed as if they were these bad, scary, taboo topics that people would look down on you for. And so for a really long time, I, I just kind of like sat in my confusion um, and in that just array of disbelief and feeling just really alone in that. And it, I, it's really crazy now because <laughs> looking back, I could have just looked around and asked someone to you know, help me stand back up or help me step yeah. into a life. But um, at the time, it just, it just seemed like I was so so alone in that um, and a lot of a lot of that and a lot of other things just going through life I, I entered this period of pretty severe anxiety that led to um, some just pretty scary stuff um, and some small depression I guess um, and it was all very just hard and strange to deal with and um, I just felt super alone. Uh, it's almost like if you were in a well at the very bottom, you can hear things happening around you, and you can like tell what's going on, but you just, you don't feel a part of it. You don't feel as if your heart is in it, and um, it, it, it's so it's so isolating to feel as if everything else and every single other person around you is just moving on and happy and joyful, and you just can't you can't see it, you can't find it, um, and so that period lasted for. Uh, quite a few years, and there's there's just this outward sense that I really projected that I was fine and I was happy and was being Morgan Prophet, joyful, um, and it was all just it was so it was so just insincere and ingenuine and what everybody expected of me, and so that's what I was putting on. Uh, and it wasn't until one night uh, I was at uh, at our loft, where which is where our youth group goes, and. Um, we were worshiping, and I just remember I, I, I was just crying. I felt so overwhelmed by my sin and by my brokenness. And I, I left, and I walked outside, and I just I, I said to my mom, I was like, I'm ne like I'm never going to be good enough for this. And it was so overwhelmingly just like intense. And I was like, I'm like literally never like I cannot I cannot be good enough. I cannot be perfect enough. There's yeah. literally nothing I can do for this. And I remember just feeling so terrified in that moment because I think my entire life. I'd seen, you know, Christianity and, and faith and spirituality as such a legalistic thing, and um, my mom just kind of looked at me and she was like, "Yeah, that's that's the point." <laughs> she was yeah. like, "You're, you, you can't do it." Yeah. Um, and I, as simple as it sounds, like that was such a turning point for me because I really realized in that moment I was like, "There is nothing I can do to earn my salvation. There's no way that I can fix myself or fix the problems that I had." And um, from that point on, it's it's been this, this really beautiful turning point of God working in my heart and creating this, you know, redemptive and recon, like reconciliatory spirit within me. And um, it, it's so beautiful to me to look back and see that in those moments and in those times where I felt so alone, um, I really truly did have this community around me. Um, my youth group and the people who were at my church, they just loved me and they accepted me for who I was. They didn't expect me to yeah. be a a better student, a better soccer player, a better a better version of myself in any way, and they weren't they weren't asking anything of me. Um, and I think I think just like realizing that and like growing growing there and growing up there, I just I just realized I was like they've been there all along. Like this is the community that God has gifted me with, and it, it's really it's really cool because I know that the Lord speaks through so many different things, whether it be like nature or scripture or or just breathing and <laughs> being alive, but. For me, 
I really truly think, uh, <laughs> people who know me, I say this all the time, I, I think the biggest blessing that the Lord has left us here on earth is, is community. And, and, and the relationships that he provides and he creates, they just, they, ch they change people's lives. And I, I, am, I am eternally grateful for the role that my youth group and my church family and the people who have poured into me over the years, I'm eternally grateful for them because I don't know, I don't know where I would be or who I would be if it wasn't for them. Like they changed, they changed the course and directory of my life for eternity. And it's just this, this beautiful, this beautiful story of God taking a heart that is just very bitter and very, um, very guarded and saying like, let me love you, let me accept you, and let me pour into the people that, um, the people that are around you. Yeah. Oh, so good. I wish everybody could just be here right now. This is so cool. Um, so more you talked about, I guess just different lies that Satan can put in your head about like, um, self-doubt, like, I can't be good enough, but that's the only qualification to being a follower of Jesus is you're not good enough. Um, which is crazy, kind of backwards, but that's kind of the point. Um, so, along with um, anxiety and stuff, what are some other things that you struggled with or you struggle with on your walk with Jesus? Mm. I mean, I think a, a big, a big um, sin thing that a lot of um, like church kids <laughs> in general have, um, that I have really struggled with a lot myself, is just the idea of being prideful of um, feeling as if I, you know, I'm doing all the right things and going to all the right places and I'm not doing anything wrong, so like I must be doing it all right, you know? Yeah. Um, and it just is so backwards, like we live in a society that like tells us continually oh, yeah. like, like check off these boxes mm -hmm. and like you will be this person. Um, and like the beautiful thing about the gospel story is it's like, you don't have to check off the boxes to like become the person God has created you to be. You just have to kind of step back from your own life and say like, God, like do the work yourself. Ooh, yeah. Which is, uh, so true. It's, it's like what you were saying. I think for me, a, a big thing too, is I'm, I'm very logical. And so sometimes the beautiful simplicity of the gospel is also so hard to grasp sometimes. Yeah. It's like, love God, love others. Yeah. And tell people about it. Exactly. And it, it just, it's so, it's so simple. You know, he, he tells us to, to love and to go and, and to be Jesus to all of these people and we just we find ways to make that so complicated. Um, yeah. I know I definitely do that a lot and just struggling I think for me the biggest thing that I have always really struggle with and I have a feeling it'll probably be until the day I meet Jesus <laughs> again is just um, the idea of accepting my salvation for what it is. Yeah. Um, I think there's always a part of me that's like I'm like I'm like okay, I like I know I'm, I know I'm like not supposed to do anything, but like what can I do like to double check, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, which is just very human, I think, but also just very counterintuitive to like yeah. whatever the gospel is telling us. And um, I don't know, it's just this. I don't know. Christine Kane um, once was being in, in, being interviewed for something, and they asked her like, how are you? How do you deal with all of the? Or how have you dealt with all of the struggles that you faced? And she just was like, what do you mean like? past tense face. She was like, every single time you get past the struggle, Satan just throws a new one. And um, I think I really had to like take that to heart and like recognize that because um, I feel like a lot of times I sit in um, complacency yeah. uh, and just I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, I'm fine now. Uh, not realizing that complacency is like this in itself that Satan is creating. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so one thing that I feel like like you're saying, it's so hard to, like, people, like, you see Morgan around campus, or if you don't know Morgan, like, um, you can see Morgan lives her faith and stuff, and you'd be like, <laughs> sometimes those things in your head, like, oh, that person probably doesn't struggle, but even, like, just everyone you look at struggles with something. I think that's something uh, we can just tell ourselves so often that we're the only one going through this right now. So, Morgan, how do you stay focused on the victory of Jesus overcoming sin for your salvation for everything? How do you live focus on that or what are some things that help you focus on that I think one of the biggest things is um, like recognizing like what truth like truth of the capital T like yeah. what, what truth is yeah um, because we're told lots of truths small t in our lives um, and sometimes those can really get in the way I think of recognizing like the truth the bigger truth that God is actually coming and telling us to um, I think count like why seeking wise counsel is something that um, something that is 
just instrumental, I think, in figuring yeah. out how to get past things in your life that you don't know. Um, our youth minister, Drew, is one of those people who you can always go to because you know that he is not coming to you with advice that's from any sort of selfish place, but it's coming from a place of, I have prayed for you and I have prayed for this. And um, finding people like that in your life who, like, again, like, don't want anything from you. Yeah. They just they want to help you step into the role and the person that God has created you to be. Those are those are people that are so special. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, and I really struggle with this, but I'm I think that it is the people who have. Yeah, Lori, that's so true. That's so good. Um, and I feel like it's so easy sometimes, kind of what Morgan's saying, is to think like, oh, this person's happy. I need to be like this or. This person's so good at that. I should do that job because they're doing it. Or I need to step up so that I have this awesome summer or something. And um, like, you see Morgan, it's like, oh, maybe she doesn't struggle with anything. Like, no one's where I'm at. But that's just lies that the world keeps telling us. And uh, I just think it's so cool. And I think Morgan lives this way to know who Jesus says you are. Um, at the end of the day, we're just God's kids. He's just our dad. Uh, not yeah, the creator of all things is our dad. And uh, that's awesome. So Morgan. Um, what's the last thing you want to say? Something to just leave people with? Uh, just some sort of inspiration or something that you live by or a motto? Um, everybody's got their mottos that you just want to leave whoever watches this with. Yeah, so it started out as this, um, I think it was kind of a joke, honestly, to kind of like make myself like feel better or like recognize how first world a lot of my problems were. But um, it's really become this like mantra, I think, of how I like live my life. Um, I have this thing where I say, life is good and Jesus is still on the throne. Uh, and it's, it, it's, it's just kind of funny because it can happen like when you like, fail a test, you're like, Jesus is still on the throne, everyone. Um, yeah. But it, like, it also just like, speaks such like, deeper truth. Um, like Bad things are, are going to happen to all of us. Uh, and I think the, the tricky part sometimes of being a Christian is, is remembering that in the midst of that darkness, in the midst of that brokenness, and in the midst of living in a world where Satan has so much power sometimes, um, just to be just to be able to look, kind of look him in the eye and be like, life is still good, and Jesus is still on this throne. Um, yeah. It's it's a very, like, comforting thing to just be like, this circumstance does not change, like, those two beautiful absolute truths. Mm, yeah. That's it. That's the 15-minute story from Morgan Prophet. Um yeah, you got to hear 15 minutes. Um, I hope you are just inspired by her story about how she came to accept Jesus um, and her just, I guess, road to finding out she wasn't perfect. Because <laughs> I guess the other thing that's what's it. And you're not going to agree with everything that was said or how people view certain things or how Morgan viewed certain things or what I said. That's a okay. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Um, there'll be another one next week. And just thank you again. This is awesome. Super excited. Woo! <laughs> what if you've been able to freeze frame in on my high five? <laughs>